Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and this is Cutting Through the Matrix on 11th of April 2013. For newcomers, make sure you make good use of uh, the website cuttingthroughthematrix.com. Lots of free orders for download. All the sites listed there carry uh, transcripts too for print up in English of many of the talks I've given over the years. And if you go into Alan Watt Sentient, sentinel.eu, you can get transcripts in other languages. Remember too that um, you are the audience that bring me to you because I don't bring on advertisers as guests. I don't make a business out of this. And uh, I only came out, as I say, because I, I, I had so much I had to say that uh, it was time to say it. And I knew what was happening, where it was all going long before 9-11 happened, in fact. And it had to be said so that, the, that people could understand the world direction you were set to go in. We're living through a script, basically. And I go through the history of the big foundations and so on that formed openly, that is, because they, they'd formed before that uh, in the 1800s under different guises. But in the 20th century, or 20th century, they formed openly as private institutions and foundations, which uh, were tax-free foundations. They hired thousands of think tanks across the planet, still do, and they work with each other. And they each take an aspect of society, and that's their particular uh, area that they cover, have to change society, guide society through cultural changes into a new type of humanity to suit the leaders, of course, themselves, have to step up the sciences that come in and be the big boss over everyone uh, from medicine and psychiatry and so on. And all that's happening today, in fact, as we speak. And... Of, of course, to, to turn things that were called services into authorities, like health services become authorities, things like that, until basically they can create a new type of society by training us generation by generation very quickly now, of course, uh, into the society that they want. So it's already happened. And also, too, it's to be a post-democratic society, an authoritarian society, and, uh, as I say, run by experts and all your betters, in other words, ones above you who get all the big paychecks and work for governments and stuff like that. So, as I say, if you want to keep this going, you can help me by buying the books and discs at cuttingthroughthematrix.com. And you can uh, buy the, the, the books and discs uh, by using a personal check from the U.S. still. Or you can uh, use PayPal. Or you can send an international postal money order from the U.S. to Canada. Or you can also uh, send cash. It's up to you. And across the world, Western Union, MoneyGram, and PayPal. And straight donations are awfully welcome in these quantitative easing uh, times, which is simply inflation, of course, and devaluation of your currency, as it's always been. Because we've been trained now to go into austerity. And, of course, everyone's in on it at the top. You understand, you think of banks as having one function, and banks really are part of the control mechanism on society. It's a big stick, in fact, today, the final big stick for the final push into the new system. It was always designed that way, and they mentioned that a 100 years ago, too, the big foundations. At the end, they would use the massive power of the purse, and that's what you have today. And, of course, the, those big foundations put their own members into government the, at the top. They put their own bureaucrats in. They become your bureaucrats in your countries across the world. They run the media, like the Royal Institute of International Affairs, CFR, and uh, and all the magazines that you read to. And every class is catered to for your own psychological uh, type. So everything has been covered an awful long time ago. And, of course, you all get your appropriate standardized education so that whatever is taught has been new, even if it's opposite of the old normals, they give you a new normal, you'll all believe in it at the same time. And that's how easy it is to control and, and, and uh, train society into each step that you have planned for them. Very, very simple. Uh, a lot of your stuff is through fiction, too. It's a better way, actually, through fiction, because your firewall is down. Back with more after this. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt, we're back cutting through the matrix And I've mentioned so many times about how we're controlled, how our minds are controlled Because we're all fed the same news and same data 
And people who watch television and news all the time are even more controlled because it's done so slickly and you're hypnotized watching that screen. And, of course, the, the, it's rapid fire, uh, pictures and so on. It gets bits and bytes of information. This sticks in your mind without you reasoning through any of it. It's basically downloading into you. And, and that's how it works so well for most folk. They never question what they're seeing. They take it as, as some kind of authoritative truth, as it's coming from government. But, in fact, it's coming from private corporations that run the media. And years ago, as I've mentioned many times, uh, most folk, even the 1950s, 60s and 70s, were, were suspicious of media because people had always known that private organizations that ran media always had a, diff- a different purpose for different political parties and so on. And, uh, and nothing has changed, really. Only there's a greater relationship, I'd say, between government and media today because the, the boys who put them in, who control the media also control the guys in government. So they put their own guys in from the same organization. CFR in America, for instance. So anyway, we're always being lied to, of course, and we get these simplistic lies. Remember, propaganda has to be very simplistic, not complicated. And uh, if it's complicated, they, they, they can often get caught out, but so they keep it very simple. And so we're given these bits and bytes of information, such as Obama saying that to the target specific terrorists, Al-Qaeda members, and of course it's been blown wide open from different articles just recently, that they've been hitting all kinds of people uh, who are unidentified peoples too. Before, under the law, it's supposed to mean that they, they would identify the person as a, as a definite threat to America. Well, it's not happening that way. I'll put up some links tonight. One is called Out of Sight, Out of Mind. And I've got a couple other ones to go up as well on the same topic that's uh, disclosed information quite recently to show you that they're blowing all kinds of peoples up. They can't even identify who they are or care for that matter. Not that the public cares either. I don't expect any reaction from it at all. I think everyone's so jaded today they don't really care about things. But I'll put them up anyway at cuttingthroughthematrix.com at the end of this broadcast. And also, too, I mentioned this about a month ago, I think it was, but uh, it's out in the mainstream now. It says, climate change now is included in U.S. science teaching guidelines for the first time. So the indoctrination is starting now to teach the children about climate change. Since they can't get the adults all on board with it, go for the children, brainwash them, give them scary pictures and things and little videos and the belief of whatever they're, they're seeing. And it'll work very well. I'll put that up tonight, too. And uh, also, Cyprus suspends the probe, of course they were going to, into who withdrew the money early out of the banks and crashed it. Of course they were going to do that. Can't tell the public who they were. Too, too, too many important people. Now, everything is changing, as I've mentioned before, into new normals. And this is not new at all, really. You'll find a lot of this stuff going back to the early 1900s, even before that, like H.G. Wells when he tried to push what he called free love in the late 1800s. And H.E. Wells went to what was called the Red Tie School. Selected members were picked out of school, put into a special school, to become the future uh, guides of humanity by writing articles or books or fiction even. Because most folk follow fiction, that's how their minds are changed. And he he had teams working with him all through his life, not just himself, to get all the stuff correct. But he pushed free love, and even in his own particular life, apparently, he had a lot of uh, sexual uh, problems, and they were classified as deviancies. He even made some of his wives sign statements. They never disclosed what exactly he was up to. But anyway, he talked about new normals would be created for the public down the roads. They'd abolish all religions eventually. And in his book, uh, you find that uh, Ship of Things to Come, he even had uh, them, them actually, the, the sort of Air Force uh, and other ones going after the Vatican. And the remaining of the, the remainders in the Vatican would run to Ireland and so on, and then they'd be extinguished there. So he was a complete socialist, of course, an elitist socialist. All the top guys who ran the socialist movement at that time were elitists. And eugenesis, they didn't believe in the lower class at all. And it's amazing, it's amazing how guys who hated the social classes at the bottom formed an organization to use the people at the bottom, all the labor parties and so on, the Fabian society. And, but he hated the working class people and he wanted to eventually eliminate them all by sterilization and let them all die off. And he, he wrote about that in his book called uh, A Modern Utopia, in fact. 
So it goes on and on and on. And again, new normals all the time are to happen. And all social uh, mores and morales were to be changed. Now, it says here, DC introduces the first, that's the comic group, the first transgender character in mainstream comics. And this is once banned from the world of mainstream comic books by the infamous Comics Code Authority. LGBT characters now have a stronger presence in the world of superhero comics than ever before, with gay and lesbian heroes like Batwoman, North Star, and Green Lantern, Alan Scott, openly declaring who they are and even getting married. This is for book. I think they start reading these things with the age of five. And so, of course, it's again to, to bring up another generation where anything goes and anything will go, you see. Because the masters have deemed it so. It's quite simple. That's why it's happening. Now also, I've mentioned before how psychiatry was put to the top there. You can't go completely into the story, but however, psychiatry was brought out by Freud. And of course, Freud belonged to a particular group that deemed that all people around them outside the group were technically insane. And that everyone should get measured and, 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 uh, and tapped for their intelligence and their any mental defects at a very early age, and they would train all societies that this would be the way of the future. Because, again, he was a totalitarian, authoritarian character, and uh, he, was, he also wanted to destroy all the old existing systems of the Western world in Europe and so on. That was the function of it. It was a political objective and a social objective. It wasn't really a psychiatric or medical objective at all. And it's been awfully successful, of course, because people believe in experts, have been trained to believe in experts now. Here's an article to show you how it's going now. It says, and I mentioned before too that um, new normals come across all the time. Psychiatry lost any credibility as a science when it used a hundred odd years or more of studies, intense studies on people, certain peoples, and signs and symptoms and so on, and uh, and, and then threw it all at the door on one particular group because of political pressure. Now, when science caves in because of political pressure, there's no science at all. You either stick with your science and say, but this is how it is. I mean, if politics wants to outlaw gravity, it's not going to change the fact that gravity exists, is it? So this is what you're getting, of course, um, especially in sexual uh, ways too. Once they normalize it, there's no psychiatry. So that he's, a, he's the latest part is to go towards their final goal where anything goes. It says, kinky in the bedroom. It says, you're not crazy. People with abnormal sexual interests no longer classified as mentally ill, but only if you're happy with whatever it is that your, your main thing is, your main kink is. And it goes into spanking in the bedroom and so on, and sexual masochism, fetishism, transmetism, sadism, no longer classified as mental disorders of abnormal or unnatural attraction, according to the American Psychiatric Association. The new edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders has renamed these kinky sexual interests with the word disorder tacked onto the end, a distinction that means a person who, who must feel personal distress about their interest in order to, to be classified as a mental disorder. So only if, you, if, you get, if it makes you unhappy with yourself is it a mental disorder. And it says the fifth edition of the manual, the DSM, I like the DSM, it could be sadomasochistic, you know, but anyway, it doesn't matter. will be released into May, in May this year and used by clinicians to diagnose and classify mental disorders and will state that happy people with kinky interests don't have a mental disorder except for those who are unhappy in doing it. In 1968, masochism, sadism, transvestism, fetishism were labelled as mental disorders and sexual deviations alongside homosexuality and criminal pedophilia. This American psychiatric consensus has con- continued to lump non-criminal paraphilias, sexual arousal to objects and situations or individuals that are not considered normative together with criminal uh, paraphilias as mental disorders. The APA eventually removed general homosexuality from the seventh printing of DSM-2 in 73, but instead introduced a new condition called sexual orientation disturbance, which was sought for people in conflict with their homosexuality. In the 1980, the DSM-3 replaced SOD with ego dystonic homosexuality, but the basic principle remained the same. Happy homosexuals that don't have a mental disorder, what unhappy ones did. I guess that's why unhappy ones can't say they're gay, right? After a lengthy struggle, all forms of homosexuality, including, including ego dystonic homosexuality, were finally removed from the revised DSM-3 in 1987. 
says that although kinky sexual interests that are considered unusual by society are no longer classified defined as medically unsound by the APA for those who are comfortable with their sexuality, some argue that those distressed by their sexual interests are not mentally ill either. Then they go into some of the organizations that are into particular areas of fetishism. Uh, and, of course, they want their, their things all to be normalized as well. Of course, of course the door is wide open for a break. Get normal. I mean, technically, folks, if a guy's happy flashing in front of children with himself, technically they'll say, well, he's a happy guy. He's a happy flasher, right? So there's nothing wrong with it, right? I mean, the sky's it's wide open. The sky's the limit. But that's where they're going with it all anyway. Now, Again, when you go into the socialistic uh, Soviet type system that's to be pushed on the world, and remember too the Royal Institute of International Affairs uh, and their boys in the, in the US, which they initially called the Council on Foreign Relations. Now they have the CFR across the whole world now, uh, and all governments. Uh, they wanted to bring a, a new type of human being in down the road through science. And... Um, in, in Russia, they called it the homos, uh, hom, uh, Sovieticus, I think they called it. Uh, the, the perfectly trained person, using Pavlovian conditioning and all the rest of it. Well, they're going the whole way today with uh, new mental guidelines for children. Back with more on this after this. Hi folks, we're back cutting through the matrix talking about the, the mental care system or mental health system and how it's not really a, an authority now. It's getting stepped up to be an authority. And uh, they always, uh, this global system always uses trial uh, countries or trial counties sometimes to try different things out on different people on select populations. And in the U.S. back in 2007, it says Massachusetts doctors were to offer questionnaires for children on Medicaid. So if as of Monday, annual checkups for the nearly half a million Massachusetts children on Medicaid will carry a new requirement. Doctors must offer simple questionnaires to detect warning signs of possible mental health problems from autism in toddlers to depression in teens. The checklists vary by age, but ask questions about children's behavior, whether spending more time alone, seeming to have less fun, having trouble sleeping, that are designed to trigger discussion between parent and doctors. The conversations may or may not lead to a referral to a specialist. Over the last several years, such questionnaires have increasingly become the standard of care in pediatric practices and so on. So that was in 2007. And then we go into, I mean, understand this is all going back to Freud, who said they wanted the whole world, especially with the children, sat with the children, and they'd retrain the children uh, all uh, uh, to be what he would classify as normal, whatever that happens to be. But this article goes on here. This is uh, up at, at, in January 2013. Problems can be found before there is gunplay, it says. It says, pediatrician Dr. Elsa Stoner, it says, um, it says, children can't enroll in school without a doctor's verification of good health. And many districts also require visits to dentists and eye doctors. It says, the Newton School Massacre's focus attention on dealing with mental health. A key step should be adding mental health screenings to the list of required checkups uh, for very young children. Such screening is really done and represents a huge unmet need. Best estimates suggest that fewer than 2% of schools have a systematic mental health screening program. Now, Scotland's another test bed for that too, and I've mentioned it before. And you go into my archives at cutting com to see how they're doing on every child in Scotland from the age of a few months onwards. It says, most perpetrators in a mass shooting suffer from mental illness that could have been identified at a young age, but spree killings are not the only reason to make such a change. Young people with undiagnosed mental illnesses are at higher risk of suicide, more likely to use drugs and alcohol, and twice as likely to drop out. Moreover, since the Columbine High School killings, two reports from the Office of the U.S. Surgeon General have supported making mental health screenings of children routine. So this has always been their goal, the push, the push, the push, to have everyone evaluated. And then you'll, if they say there's something wrong, uh, you'll get intensive conditioning uh, routines taught on you until you're, you're you know, and, and drugs, no doubt as well, until they've got the kind of citizen, uh, poten- or you have the, the citizen potential they want you to have 
you grow up pretty dumb, stupid, and you believe all the news you're given. Because that's what they're going to do with you. So I'll put this article up tonight too, because there's a big push, and Obama's just allocated another 280, I think it's million dollars for, for this kind of program for children across the U.S. And once again, it gets back into the state now is in charge of the child. Remember that, uh, uh, Julian Huxley, who worked at UNESCO, uh, the brother of Aldous Huxley, who was, and he was both, they're both globalists, of course, but Julian said that uh, this, the state really should should be in charge of the child and, and the culture. The, the, the parents are contaminated, even if they've been updated to the present, understand, completely different from their grandparents with the cultures. They're still, they're still contaminated with something of the old culture that served its purposes that were changing us all to the present. And, and therefore, the state should give them the new values along with the media and entertainment. And H.G. Well and uh, Bertrand Russell also said the same thing. So it's pretty well here, folks. It's all here. We're really going through the scientific age, and most folks are completely unaware of it. That's going. It's even going on. And then when we go into uh, this article here, it says uh, mental health screening for children column, and it says. Uh, uh, same thing again. I'll put this one in, plus the one from Obama with the money that he's putting forward towards it to see how they can uh, head off at the pass, so to speak. But remember, too, psychiatry is anything but a, a, a really objective in a sense. It's very subjective and, and lots of guesswork involved. And, of course, you get different diagnoses about everybody. Even ones that have been cleared by 10 psychiatrists can be cop with another two or three psychiatrists will give them strange diagnosis. All depends on the personality that's diagnosing you. And that's a fact in psychiatry. Uh, so many uh, people have gone in to psychiatrists uh, for videos, making videos, and claiming they were with hidden cameras, claiming they were feeling this, that, or whatever. Uh, same, same symptoms would give to three or four or five psychiatrists, and they'd get diagnosed with different diseases by each psychiatrist and given different drugs. Look at YouTube, this is fantastic. So it's a con game as far as I'm concerned with psychiatry. They're in the dark. But it doesn't matter. They're going to pretend something else because, you see, neuroscience is a new term as you pretend that they've got even more ability to diagnose you by looking at different scans of the brain and all the rest of it. They must bring up neuroscience. This is the big one for psychiatry and behaviorism to get more control over society under the guise of science. You attack science onto anything, people start to believe it, doesn't matter what it is. And um, also, I want to mention too that uh, in the system that we're living in today, we have philanthropists going to the top of the tree. Uh, articles have come out a few years ago where they say it's time now for big philanthropists to take part in global governance along with the regular governments. Well, we didn't vote for that. And what makes them special to decide our lives just because they're stinking rich? Generally, you don't get rich with a massive crime there somewhere. Back with more after this. You're listening to the Republic Broadcasting Network because you can handle the truth. Hi, folks. We're back cutting through the matrix and questioning why philanthropists, so-called philanthropists, are really just crooks like George Soros. Uh, are, are supposed to help guide us all now and manage uh, and tell governments how to manage their money and so on. This is the guy who, who boasts he, he broke the Bank of England when he phoned two his pals up. They manipulated the stock market and crashed the, the British pound and they bet on crashing it. And they, and they raked in a lot of cash because of it. Got awfully well, more wealthy than he already was. Nobody hung him up for that, you know. Nobody locked him away for that. No, they, they elevated him to a star status because he did it. Oh, how clever. The guy is a crook. But you see, the world's run by crooks, especially in the, in the area of money. Always has been. And Soros is the perfect type for it. So they elevate him up to, to, to stardom, basically, through PR. And now he's advising governments about their money. I'll put a few articles up tonight about that, too. He's crazy. He attended the BOA forum in Asia recently. 
and is over there right now, in fact, I think, and he's telling China what to do and other countries what to do. He's also told Angela Merkel to start selling euro bonds or get out of the euro altogether and stuff like that. These are little dictators, you see. But again, they're not doing it on their own. The big organization above them has put them there to do what they're doing, obviously, very obviously. Now, getting back to our future where every child and everybody is going to be, it's not just children, by the way, they want to test you all through your life, maybe twice a year, in fact. This is the big goal of the top socialists, so that the fascists at the top can, uh, can breathe easy and rest easy at night when they go to their orgies and things. And so neuroscience also goes into neural law. You see, this is where neuroscience is trying to get into to start change all the rules and about uh, charging people with crimes and so on, especially specific people like murderers and that. Well, if it's a psychopath, they can't help it. They've already got psychopaths off with it by claiming he can't help it. This scan shows he's got a, a different mass in the frontal lobe than other people, and he's got a tendency to psychopathy. Well, lots of people have tendencies to, to, to psychopathy, but they don't do it. In fact, two YouTube videos up there that were the first ones to come out with all the, the various scans they were doing on it, the two psychologists, two different videos, these guys didn't even know each other, uh, ended up going through the scan themselves, and they had it. They may be classified as psychopaths themselves. But it doesn't matter, you see. So it's, it's to give them credence by pretending that they're scientific so they could elevate psychiatry up and give it more authority over all of us. Anyway, it says neural law from neuroscience changes the landscape of criminal responsibility. It says advances in science could have profound consequences for law and morality. So... It says, neuroscience evidence can help a defendant establish the necessary elements of an optimism defense and more broadly can influence jurors and judges determining uh, determination of whether a defendant should be held criminally responsible for whatever they've done. Then they give an example and it gives you one in Canada. It says, early Saturday morning, May 18, 1987, Kenneth Parks rose from his bed, went outside his car, went to drive to the car 20 kilometers from Pickering, East Toronto, to Scarborough, where his mother and father-in-law lived. He arrived there, took the tire iron, and bludgeoned the mother-in-law to death. It ne- nearly killed the father-in-law, too. It says, after the attack, Parks drove to a police station, told police that he thought he had killed someone. He was charged with murder and attempted murder, but he pleaded not guilty, arguing that during the entire time that morning, while driving, while attacking the in-laws, uh, and while speaking to the police, he was asleep. So a year later, a jury agreed. The jury acquitted Parks in part as a result of evidence that electrical signals produced by his brain, as measured by an uh, an uh, electroencephalographic machine, were extremely unusual, and further evidence that such readings are, unlike a a polygraph, impossible to fake. So... Uh, now, you can find lots of uh, variations uh, when readings in electroencephalograms. And uh, as I say, it, but anyway, they've used this to get the guy off with it. They've got another guy off in the States off with, with shooting people outside his home and killing them. Uh, and so so now they're, they're getting this kind of excuse going along. Well, the person can't help what they do. So a guy who murders can't help murdering. You understand where this is all going? Meanwhile, they, they can grab you and you're perfectly placid and say, well, you're capable of going ahead and committing murder. They might start treating you then by court order. This is what it's all about. It's total control over all of us, all our behaviors, and who to put inside for treatment uh, and, and mandatorily, and, and also to make society even more chaotic is to let other ones uh, walk out the door because they were asleep while committing the murder. You understand where it's going? Order out of chaos. And another one too, it says future tens uh, of Enrico. It says, will neural law change the judicial system? And does free will exist? And it goes through uh, more stuff on this uh, uh, and so on. It says, at my brain made me do it, which is a, a link I'll put up tonight. This is a future tense event held at the New American Foundation Monday, October 22nd. Scientists, lawyers and journalists gathered to discuss the mounting use of brain imaging in the courtroom to determine biological origins for crime. Now, you understand eugenicists and, and sociologists and the Soviet Union always believed that they could change anyone's behavior with the proper uh, Pavlovian type conditioning. 
And they believe they still believe that t- today. They can still change all of us with the right kind of conditioning at an early age, all through our lives, lifelong conditioning. And these boys that are going to the guys of neuroscience want the power to go ahead and do it. And it seems that they're getting it too. So it says, um, determined biological origins for crime to detect lies, to mitigate sentencing, and more. According to the panelists, neuroscience won't yet, and never, uh, maybe never will, completely upend the justice system as we know it, but it will only come into play more in the coming years. And it tells you where neuroscience is now, and the different uh, top scientists involved with it, and different cases too. And it says, what should we do with those who might become criminals? Now, this is pre-crime, remember. Pre-crime. This is all part of it. It says, uh, Keel Pope and Gary Marchant, who is Lincoln Professor of Emerging Technologies, Law and Ethics at Arizona State University's Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law, are all intrigued by the idea of developing treatment programs for those with brain scans and personal histories that suggest they are predisposed to criminal behavior. The legal system and some of the tragedies you read about underscore importance of using this technology for prevention, not to put them in jail, but to try to stop it from happening, Marchant said, echoing an argument he made in a slate uh, uh, piece recently. Says Sally Sattel, a resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute, pointed out that treatment could depend in part on whether there may be an acquired psychopathy versus an innate one, but the panel wasn't sure which flavor might be easier to remedy. Then they go into law and how it's going to affect all kind of law. Now, this is going to be a big, big, big one, folks, because it's going to change every, the way that you think and so on. And they're going to get you so unbalanced, you won't know if you do have free will or not and stuff like that. That's what it's all meant to do. It's just like the Kinsey report was put out to change the whole mores of all sexual behavior. It was put out as an absolute scientific truth. It was all bogus because... Kinsey hired prostitutes, male and female prostitutes, uh, as a so-called average American uh, person. And uh, it was into so much kinky stuff. I mean, even hired professional people, well, professional people, they worked for government, by the way, the U.S. government, to literally bugger young babies, babies, not kidding you, with stopwatches to see if they screamed and so on. And then he said that the screams actually were, 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 were sounds of enjoyment. But it changed the mores, it changed all of the court laws about sexual behavior when it came to court. And so is neuroscience going to do it way beyond that. Way beyond that. Now, another thing, too, I'm going to talk about, too, and I've got a few articles about neuroscience tonight, remember, too. But also, it says uh, six officials are held over New York mayoral, the mayoral race bribery scandal. So there's nothing new in New York about scandals and, and, and mayoral races. But it says that um, two New York state lawmakers are among six officials who have been arrested over an alleged plot to rig the city's mayoral race. As a state senator, Malcolm Smith, and city councilman, Dan Halloran, were detained at their homes, Smith was attempting to bribe his way on the ballot for a vote in November 2013, prosecutors said. Charges include bribery, extortion, as well as wire and mail fraud, according to the criminal complaint. So Smith, a Democrat from the New York borough of Queens, is accused of bribes, uh, of bribing leaders of the local Republican county committees to get the certificates needed to let him run as a Republican. Also charged are Bronx County Republican Party Chairman Joseph Savino, Queens County Republican Party Vice Chairman Vincent Tabon, uh, Naromi Jasmine, Mayor of Spring Valley, New York State, and her deputy Joseph Desmarais. And then you get this came out of it. it says Governor Como pro- proposes new class of public corruption and crimes. Because there was so much corruption there, which is normal in New York. It's a gangster place, basically. And it says, um, he announced today that new legislation, the Public Trust Act, it would create a new class of public corruption crimes and enhance New York prosecutors' ability to crack down on public corruption across the state. Currently, the laws defining public corruption in New York are obsolete and far less effective than federal statutes for prosecuting individuals who commit public corruption crimes. The Public Trust Act announced by the governor today would establish a new class of public corruption crimes and expand the current definitions of public corruption offences to, to enable prosecutors to hold accountable those who violate public trust. It would be something that was across the board, eh? Right at the federal level, too. 
The law would also impose tougher jail sentences on individuals that misuse public funds <laughs> and permanently bar those convicted of public corruption offences from holding any elected or civil offence, lobbying, contracting, receiving state funding, or doing business with the state directly or through an organisation. So that's just New York. But, I mean, this stuff is going on in every uh, big city. In Canada, too, we get that, too. Same kind of stuff. Gangsterism. You understand how much money it goes through the hands of mayors, even, for contracts for the state. And the kickbacks that it's not normally received for, getting, for giving them out there to their pals, you know. Now, also, I'm putting out tonight, uh, since the Newtown Sandy Hook Commission Community Foundation today announced the release of $4 million to be dispersed by an interim advancement committee to 40 families most of you have impacted by Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. The 40 families are those of the 26 victims, uh, the families of 12 surviving children from classrooms directly involved in the shooting, and the families of two people injured in the tragedy. The interim advancement committee will also consider disimburse, uh, disbursements to address immediate needs of the first responders and teachers and so on. So far, it says they have over $11 million collected for this. And, and you know, I, the, the way I see the world, it was the same with 9-11 and, and many big disasters that happened and so on too. Massive money flows in. We've seen it too with, with the earthquake from Haiti. And then everyone gets involved and all the good folk throw out the money out there. And then remember they put, I think it was Bush and Clinton in charge, Bill Clinton in charge of the, the charity once it was up and running. And I think none of it went to where it was supposed to go. But you understand too, there's no check on where it really does go. And, and, and when I look at these shootings and the money that it ends up bringing in, and I wouldn't put it past when I mean, look at criminality and understand criminal, there's really some amazing criminals in the world. They could bring on shootings and, and make things happen. I'm, and I'm not kidding about that. And, and, and plan ahead that they would be the ones to collect the funds. This is the world we're living in today, folks. It's full of tricks. And sleazy people. Often high up too. In fact, most often high up. Sad to say, but it's true. Also, Getting back to mor- the moral, uh, well, morality is changing, of course, and, and to talk about the, de- uh, the, the, the diagnostic manual for psychiatry, you know, but culture has been degraded, again, intentionally, step by step, generation by generation, and, until literally it's, uh, there's hardly anything left to change. It's all pretty well in the gutter. But uh, it says Mayor Anthony Weiner, remember Winnie Weiner, the guy that was photographing his, uh, Bordelli parts and send them across to certain women and so on. It says he may run for government, uh, for the governor or for the mayorship, I think it's of New York. And it says, um, the whole, a whole New York City mayoral race just got a whole lot more interesting. This, the sex, they call it sexed scandal ridden former Congressman Anthony Weiner announced a few paragraphs into a laudatory New York Times magazine profile that is considering joining the crowded democratic field. I guess it fit right in. It says that could shake up allegiances amongst New York City's political clans, including, this is from the Jewish newspaper that forwarded, including some city Jews. An analyst warned against betting against Wiener, given his, his, his potent resume and proven vote winning prowess. If it hadn't happened, you see, he was going to be right up there if you hadn't blown it by, uh, getting a bit, uh, what would, what would you call it? Overconfident. Can you say overconfident? Then I guess, um, he would have been right up there anyway. He was getting groomed for all this kind of uh, work anyway. So, so anyway, he's, he's thinking of running for it. So he'll fit right in, I guess. He'll, he'll, there's nothing you can say about that. And also here, there's an act getting passed in Canada. It's called Not Criminally Responsible Reform Act. The government of Canada is committing, are committed to protecting victims of crime and to making streets and communities far safer for Canadians. To this end, on February the 8th, 2013, Minister Stephen Harper announced the introduction of the Not Criminally Responsible Reform Act. The act was tabled by the government this morning in Parliament. The act would ensure that public safety comes first in the decision-making process with respect to accused persons found not criminally responsible on account of mental disorder. We'll wait till the neuroscientists get into it and enhance the safety of victims and promote greater victim involvement in the criminal code mental disorder regime. 
So that's going to, uh, again, open the door to a lot of the neuroscientists and psychiatry and massive lobby groups. Because remember, Big Pharma is into the, uh, the psychoactive drug uh, thing. That's with the big, big money in that stuff. And then they get their, their, their main uh, doctors to, to lobby government on behalf of neuroscience. So they can get in on the act, you see. So that will be the next step. You see how things work? Step by step, the government puts it out. The pharma responds by massive payouts to these guys. And then the, the, the psychiatrists lobby government on behalf of pharma. Then they get in on the act. And rather than protecting the, the, the victims, it will change off into let's get these guys off, off the hook from doing whatever they happen to do. Everything's very predictable in this system because this is where they want to go. They've written about it a long, long time ago, many times over. Also, too, in Australia, they're going the same way with, with vaccination because Big Pharma, again, is behind it all, too. And they've got government on board with them because they get their own people involved. In, in fact, on government sometimes, out of pharma companies uh, in the high positions to do with vaccination and the national health systems. And it says... They're now saying if you don't vaccinate your children, uh, you won't get into, into, into school. And the parents of the children should be punished. Back with more after this. Hi folks, we're back, cutting through the matrix, and we'll take Jolie from North Carolina, if she's still there. Hello? Hello, Alan. Hello. Yeah, I wanted to comment on the DC Comics and their introduction of the first transgender character. Yeah. Yeah, that would be uh, Batgirl's roommate, Alicia Yeo, Y-E-O-H, two Y's in that name. Um, I started looking through on some of the people behind this, one of the co-publishers of DC Comics. Mm-hmm. He also created the OMAC project. OMAC is an acronym for basically the cyborgs that exist oh, yeah. um, in the DC Comics universe. Uh-huh. And they're cybernetic monsters that inhabit human beings as hosts. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I got to thinking about your cutting through series and how all this ties in with the one, the hermaphroditic uh, agenda and the mm-hmm. androgynous agenda. And, you know, um, Perfecting that which has been left unperfected, merging male and female into one, and then the interfacing with uh, humans into machines and leading to the brain chip. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. They're, they're heading exactly towards this whole thing. And uh, the androgyny look, of course, is basically getting pushed by part of the culture industry, which is fashion. And uh, some of the latest fashion shows apparently have these very skinny, skinny girls up wearing men's suits and so on, and uh, looking, uh, trying to make them look more mannish. So they're, they're trying to, to uh, and it happened for many years, uh, do away with uh, the gender differences altogether, as though it didn't exist. It's quite amazing. It's, it's like saying it doesn't exist. This is what they want you to really eventually believe, and that, that men are just taught to be men by by watching other guys around them, older people, and women simply are, are given dolls to play with, and that's why they... No, there's a changing all of nature. Uh, I mean, guys at the moment can't have children or bear children. Uh, women can. That's the way it's always been. And But, but these guys literally um, are, are going beyond all this and all sanity by saying, no, there's no difference whatsoever. It's just uh, uh, so you can change your gender whenever you want or even psychologically change it whenever you want and so you can just switch it on and off. I mean, how ludicrous can it be? But this is the big, big, big agenda of those at the top that manage all society. And, uh, and they know exactly where they're going with all of it. All of it, you know. Well, you know, there is nothing new under the sun. The corporate logo, um, DC Comics is owned by Time Warner. Their corporate yeah. logo is the all-seeing eye, the eye of Ra. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so we look at the uh, the merging of male and female and, you know, that oh, yeah. whole ancient religion that you talk about in your books, which has been so helpful to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're definitely following it all, too. And they got Disney involved big time as well, departments of Disney. And uh, they also bought one of the big comic guys out too, I think, the organizations out too. And uh, they're definitely heading out that way with all the warrior princess type things. 
and warriors and all the all the latest movies it's all young female warriors and uh, again it's to change society and hope that, that young girls will start to emulate these new warriors we're always given the heroes remember and these guys know how we, we take how our minds work perfectly well uh, and uh and it will, it will start working like that too. You'll see women becoming more masculine in their behavior, apart from the fact they're getting dosed with high estrogen content and all their foods and so on. But uh, you, 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 it actually makes them more aggressive and more masculine when they go over the normal levels. So this is all planned. And again, Charles Galton Darwin said that in the next million years, we shall alter the hormonal structure of both male and females. The males will become placid. The women will become more aggressive. This Pretty well being done. But thanks for calling. From Hamish myself from Ontario, Canada, it's good night, me. God of your gods, go with you.